Our I-Team investigation into Fairway Oaks continues as we hear from a construction attorney who explains what he believes is working against the residents currently living in Habijack's homes that appear to be falling apart. We've been following this story for you nearly two months now since owners of these Habijack's homes came to us with concerns over how the homes were built. Some of the 85 houses built by volunteers 16 years ago are cracking now and sinking. Francesca Amaker joins us live now. And Fran, what have you learned about the options these homeowners have? You know, for 16 years, these homeowners have searched high and low for different options. They're not sure who is to blame or even who is to turn, who they can turn to. Now, tonight, I spoke with a local attorney who says they're up against time. And unfortunately, time may have just run out. For the past few years, Fairway Oaks residents have questioned where to turn. Should they hold Habijacks, the housing authority, or the city responsible for allowing their homes to be built on part of a landfill, causing cracked slabs and settlement issues? Since 2007, several homeowners have been represented by Jacksonville Area Legal Aid, who has not yet filed a lawsuit. But today, I met with a construction attorney not associated with the case. He revealed the residents are up against even more. Florida has very strict time limits on when you can bring a claim that's related to either negligent design or negligent construction. Construction attorney Barry Onsbacher shared two crucial laws that are time sensitive in this case. He says the first is the statute of limitations. If the issue is obvious, then there's four years from when they purchase their home and take occupancy. If it's hidden, they have four years from when they discover it or with reasonable investigation should have discovered it. And since Ms. Mixon noticed the cracks last year, she could possibly be covered. But according to the second law, the statute of repose, it doesn't depend on the knowledge of the homeowner. You simply count 10 years from when the home was completed, the owner took occupancy, or the builder completed the contract. And when time runs out, the homeowner is left to foot the bill. Most mortgages are 30 years. And a lot of issues don't show up until well after the 10 year statute of repose has run. So when people first start seeing problems, it's already too late to act upon it. Taking a look at Miss Mixon's home, we found John Davey was the contractor. We typed his license number into the Construction Industry Licensing Board and found he had two violations before applying to work with Habijax in 2000, a citation in 1994 and an imposed suspension in 1988. Right now, it doesn't appear that residents have many options, but Ansbacher says they need to pinpoint exactly where things went wrong. The only chance that they would have to avoid the harsh effects of the statute of repose would be if the homeowners could show that the building contract for some reason was never completed, that there was some portion of the construction contract that wasn't finished, and then there might be recourse against the builder. And there's a big lesson to be uh, learned here for any homeowners out there. Back in 2006, we learned that the Florida legislature, uh, the, the time was 15 years, but they reduced it to 10 years. And just recently, as recent as last year, Florida legislature attempted to reduce the time to seven years, but it did not pass or go through. For our reporting live, Francesca Amaker, Channel 4, The Local Station.